your grace and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. You guys may take your seats. Now, we've had some good news this morning. We celebrate, certainly celebrate with these parents, but we also unfortunately have some sad news. Uncle Peter and Auntie Joyce both passed away this past uh, Tuesday. Auntie Joyce, early in the morning, she was 87 years old. And then later on that day, on the same day, Uncle Peter at, uh, at 94 passed away on, on Tuesday as well. I visited with him, spent some time with him, and, and it was just amazing how uh, his family, it's my, my father's uh, uncle, he's been such a, a blessing over the years, such an encouragement. You know, when I came into ministry, I can just remember him right from the start, just, just encouraging me, always sitting, you know, right in the front here, Sunday after Sunday, and on Tuesday, I'm visiting him, and he's saying to me, how's it going in the church? Because obviously, for the last probably couple of months, he hasn't been able to attend. They've just been too, too sickly and, and too frail, and, 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 and he was just encouraging me again. And then the next moment, he speaks a blessing over me. There he is on his deathbed, and he's speaking a blessing over me. Isn't that amazing? And so we're going we're gonna to really miss them. Their uh, memorial service funeral will be in, in not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 8th. It'll be at 10 o'clock in the morning. We just, um, it's been postponed to make uh, room for some, some of their family flying in from, from overseas. All right. Here we are this morning, and we're privileged to open God's Word again. Are you ready? Got your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones, your, your things. All right. I want to talk to you quickly this morning about thinking twice. Thinking twice. Have you ever had a conversation with one of your children, obviously smaller, younger children, where they wanted to buy something and they, they wanted to use all of their money, all of their little savings that they had at the time, to buy this specific item, this specific toy or something, and you just knew it, it wasn't wise, it wasn't, it wasn't the right thing. There's some things that they can buy where you know they're going to use it or play with it for years to come. And then there's some other stuff where you just know it's not a good idea. And, and it's one of those occasions, and, and you say to them, well, you know, just, just, just think about it. And they're not in a position to think because they want it. You say, do you really want it? Oh, I, of course they want it. I mean, stupid question. And so you get them, well, just, just, just think about it some more. Why do we do that? Because we want them to somehow just take time out to think. Because we've learned from experience. We've learned that if we don't take time out to think, and we just impulsively go and do something, those are the things that we regret down the line. And then we ask ourselves this question, you know, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Why did I do, why did I do that? You know, I, I said something that, that I shouldn't have said. I bought something that I shouldn't have bought. You know, I kissed someone that I shouldn't have kissed or slept with someone. I, I shouldn't have. What was I thinking? And I, and I think many of the mistakes that you and I make could have been avoided if we'd just taken a little bit of time just, just to think twice, just to, just to pause for a couple of moments and, and just to think. I mean, everybody said he wasn't right for me. But I went ahead and did it anyway. Somehow I knew the return on the investment was just way too good to be true. I, I knew it that deep down, it, but, but I just went ahead and I did it anyway. I knew I shouldn't have bought that thing, but I went ahead and I did it anyway. Why? Because I didn't take time to, to think. And, and, and I think if we're to just, uh, if, we're, if we want to make wiser decisions and, and less mistakes, one of the smartest things we can do is, is, is think twice before we go and do something. You'll find some people keep making the same mistakes over and over. They go from one toxic relationship into the next toxic relationship into the next one. And you think, man, you, you find people make one bad business decision after the next. Go from one, one HP contract into the next. In other words, debt into some more debt into some more debt. And you look at it and you go, what, what were they thinking? And so if we keep doing the same thing, 
we're going to keep getting the same result. And that's when history just keeps repeating itself. And that's when, when our friends look at us and they think, man, you know, he keeps doing that. He always does that. You know, when is he going to learn? She, she always makes the same mistakes. Why, why, why does she do that? When is she going to learn? If we keep doing the same thing, we're going to keep getting the same result. Let, let me put it another way. If you think the way you always think, you're going to do what you've always done. Because that's where it starts, is with our, our thinking. If we think the way we always think, we're going to keep doing what we've always done. And so I, I think sometimes, sometimes we've got to challenge our own thinking. Otherwise, we just keep doing the same thing. And so we've got to pause for a moment and just say, just hang on, hang on. Um, is, is my thought pattern right? Is my thinking right? Listen to what the Apostle Paul says to the Christians in Rome. He writes this letter to them. Uh, they, they're living in Rome under the shadow of the oppressing Roman Empire, and it certainly wasn't easy for them. And he says to them, yeah, in, in Romans 12, verse 2, he says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. He's saying to them, if you think like them, you're going to act like them. He says, but instead, let God transform you. So he's saying, let, let God change you. He says, you need to be different. And of course, the question that we ask is, is how, how, how am I going to be different? And he gives us the answer. He says, by changing the way you think. In other words, by thinking differently. If you think the way you've always, you always think, you're going to keep doing what you've, what you've always done. And so we've got to learn to think differently. Now, another translation of that same verse says this. It says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Don't conform. Don't follow. Don't do what they do. Don't conform, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. So we are transformed by, the Bible says, by the renewing of our mind. Now, how do you do that? Well, think about this for a moment. How, how do you renew uh, an old antique piece of furniture? Or how do you renew an old car, restore an old car? You've got to replace some of that vehicle. You've got to replace the old with, with the new. So you've got to replace, let's say, the old paint and give it a brand new paint job. Repaint, replace some of the, look at the, the, the upholstery, and the seats are good, but the upholstery is, is bad, and you've got to replace that old cracked leather with some brand new leather, nicely stitched and everything. You've got to replace the old with the new, and it's exactly the same with our thinking. How do we renew our mind? You've got to replace old thoughts with new thoughts. You've got to replace wrong thoughts with the correct thoughts. Now, I want to give you a couple of examples quickly. We're going to run through just a couple of, exa a couple of examples of, of wrong thinking. And if we keep on thinking like that, we're going to keep on living like that and acting like that and going down, down that road. And so we've got to learn to, to identify wrong thinking, and I'll show you in a moment how, and, and we've got to replace that with, with right thoughts. And so let me give you a couple of examples of wrong thinking. Uh, here's, here's one. If I find the right person, if I find the right person, everything will be okay. No, 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 no. If I become the right person, everything will be okay. You see, sometimes you look at a relationship and, 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 and you think the reason that relationship is so toxic and, 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 and so divisive and so wrong and everything is, is, is because, because you married an idiot. <laughs> And so if I can just find the right person, if I can find somebody who's not an idiot, then the relationship will be great. No, no, no. Let, let, let me just say this. Why did you go for an idiot in the first place? <laughs> and some people, you know, you look at them and they're always drawn to that kind of person. They, it's strange how there's a pattern of that. Do, do you know why? Because, you see, how we see ourselves 
And what we think about ourselves is going to determine who we draw to ourselves. And so if we can change how we see ourselves, we'll change who we draw to ourselves. You see, it's our thinking. all comes back to, to our thinking. Now, here's another example of, of wrong thinking. My situation is unique. You know, Leonard, this, this is it's, it's a unique situation. No, no, it's not. You are unique, but your situation isn't unique. And, and if you don't trust me, go and speak to any one of our pastors. They do extensive counseling you know, every single week, go and speak to somebody at our, at our counseling center, explain your situation, and they'll say to you, oh no, I've heard that before, I've seen that before, others have done that before, but it's just, it's, it's unique to, to you, it's the first time it's, it's happened to you. Now, why is this kind of thinking a problem? My situation is, is unique, because you, you see, we think we're going to dodge the rules. Because this is unique to me, I'm not going to suffer consequences. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to face, you know, it, it's not wrong in, 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 in my situation. I'm, I'm not going to get caught. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away with it. I'm going to get away. I'm going to dodge the bullet because my situation is unique. It's, it's not unique, all right? That's the wrong thinking. Let me give you another example. I know this is not right. Leonard, I know it's not right, but, but it makes me happy. And God wants me to be happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, that's, that's probably one of the most selfish, naive ways of, of thinking, all right? If it's not right, I know it's not right, then it's not right, full stop. Listen, God is more concerned. You need to hear this. God is more concerned about our obedience than he is our happiness. Because our obedience ultimately leads to long-term happiness. But if we try and pursue a, a happiness ahead of obedience, we'll live a messed up life and a disobedient life. But when we follow God's word and God's way and, and we obey God, happiness follows down the line. And so I think we can avoid a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, a lot of embarrassment. If we'll just pause for a moment and just just think about what we're thinking about. There's sometimes, no, 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 you know, I'm going to do that. I know it's not right, but God wants me to be happy. Nonsense, man. <laughs> just think about that for a moment. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 13. It says, wise people think before they act. Fools don't even brag about their foolishness. You've heard people like this, you know, ah, I just do that, and, you know, and it's almost like they brag about their, their stupidity, and some people do that. Here's another example of wrong thinking. If only I had that, man, I would be happy. You know, if I had that car parked in my driveway, I, I would be happy, and ladies say, you know, if I had those boots, if I had that handbag in my cupboard, I'm telling you, I would be happy. No, you wouldn't. It would be short-term happiness. But I'm telling you, gentlemen, in 12 months' time, you're looking for another one already. And you're saying, if only I had that one, then I'll be happy. But, but I thought this one, no, no, but 12 months have gone, has gone by. And ladies, you know, you're going to be happy with those boots, but 12 days later, I'm telling you, or you're on the internet already. All right. Here's my point. Here's my point. Appetites are never satisfied on this earth. Appetites are never satisfied on this earth. Think about it. Do you know anybody with just one tattoo? You say, oh, Leonard, I do, I do. Yes, for now, for now. And by the way, I don't have a problem with tattoos. I think they're great on other people. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, th th this guy asked his friend once, he said, you know, what, what made you t tattoo a, a whale on your body? He said, well, you know, it used to be a dolphin and then I put on weight. <laughs> Appetites are never satisfied. All right. Listen to what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 6 verse 7. A man's labor is for his mouth. 
And yet his appetite is not satisfied. Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. Solomon said, he says, he says I've come to realize everything is meaningless. Everything is in vain. He says, he, says, he says, I've pursued power. I've pursued riches. I've pursued women. I've pursued sex. He says, I've gone after everything. And I've realized, you know what he's saying? He's saying, nothing on this earth will satisfy you long term. So all I'm saying is don't look at something and think, if I have that position, it'll be good, but it's not going to satisfy. If I had that house, if I had that whatever it is, then no, that's the wrong thinking. Those things don't satisfy. The only thing that satisfies long term is our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's it. Here's another example of, of wrong thinking. We say to ourselves, well, you know, it's just this once. It's, it's just this once. No, it's just the beginning. It's just the start. Because once we've done it once, it's easy to do it again and again and again, isn't, isn't it? I mean, any, you, you can look at any drunk it started with one drink. Just one drink. Wrong thinking will lead to wrong living. Think to us. Think to us. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. How many times haven't we said something? I certainly have plenty said something that, that we regretted afterwards. I know the introverts are kind of looking at me and saying, never, I've never said anything I regret. Because you never say anything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I think for the rest of us, <laughs> we have, listen to what the Bible says. It says, and this is an indictment. It says, intelligent people think before they speak. So you could argue, you could argue the introverts are very intelligent. All right. I'll give that to you. Intelligent people think before they speak. What they say is then more persuasive. They think before they speak. Somebody once said, we fail to say the right words because we choose the wrong words. And we choose the wrong words because we fail to think of the right words. We fail to think of the right words. I think one of the biggest causes of, of, of wrong thinking is just selfishness. We just, it's, it's what I want, and when I want it, and how I want it. The Bible says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, it's saying, it's saying he says, focus on godly things, not selfish things. Because so often we focus on on what I want and what I prefer. And that's why we, we, we say things like, if, if only I had that, if only I had that, I will be happy. I know it's wrong, but, but, but it makes me happy. You see what we're doing? It's all about me. And so wrong thinking generally comes from selfish thinking. Wrong thinking generally comes from selfish thinking. All right, let's go back to Romans chapter 12, where he says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The, the, we said the way to renew is to replace. The way to renew is to replace. We replace old thoughts with new thoughts. We, re, we replace wrong thoughts with, with the right thoughts. But you see, this is what we've got to realize it's going to be a bit difficult. <laughs> and it's going to take a bit of time to break that habit because most of us are in a habit of thinking and a habit of doing. And we keep on doing the same thing. A couple of years ago, I wanted to just improve my tennis a little bit. Mark was beating me all the time. And I thought, I've had enough of this. I've, I've got to go and get a tennis coach. And so I, I, I got a coach and, and went for a couple of lessons. And so the first lesson he just said, he says, all right, let's hit a couple of balls and see how you do. And so within the first couple of balls, he stopped. He says, you're hitting from the wrong foot. Oh, what do you mean the wrong foot? I know I have a right foot and a left foot. You say I have a wrong foot. 
But let me tell you, I battled. I battled to hit from the right foot. Why? Because I've been hitting from the wrong foot for so long. And for some of us, we, we, we've, we're in this wrong pattern of thinking. And we've been doing it for so long that it's difficult. But not impossible. And that's what I want you to see this morning. It's difficult. But not impossible. And so if, if we want to change our thinking, yes, it may require a bit of effort. And yes, it's going to be a little bit difficult at first, but, but it's going to work down the line. You know, if somebody has been divorced, we normally recommend that they don't get married within the first year or two, probably more emphasis on two, because, because they're in a certain habit, certain habit, certain way of thinking, certain way of doing. And if they go from one relationship straight into the next relationship, they just keep thinking the same and keep doing the same and the same habits. And guess what's going to happen down the line? We're going to probably end up having just the same results. And so we'll say to them, just take your foot off the petrol a bit. Just back down a little bit. And, but you see, but for some people, they're serial daters. <laughs> They go from one relationship in the next relationship into the next relationship. And they're thinking, their thinking is, I can't be alone. I can't be alone. I can't be. It's the wrong thinking. Take time out. You've got to think twice. You've got to evaluate your thinking. Because otherwise you end up, end up doing the same thing again and again and again. But what if I meet the right person? Well, the problem is you aren't the right person for them at the moment. And so sort that stuff out in your life. Go and do the walking in victory course that we have. It's a, it's a great course. Go and do it. It'll, it'll help you to recognize some of the wrong thinking. And, and wrong thinking leads to wrong living, wrong acting. And, and you're going to just repeat that again. Take, take a bit of time out. Well, how long? You know, a week, two? <laughs> no, maybe a year or two will be better. All right, now. You say, Leonard, how? If we've, got to, if we've got to replace our thinking, where do we get that? Right here. Right here. That's why it's so important that you and I just, just on a daily basis, we just, we just spend a bit of time every morning, just a little bit of time, just, just reading in God's Word. Because this year will always challenge our thinking. You see, the Bible teaches, let me give you a couple of examples. The Bible teaches the way up is actually the way down. You say, well, well, hang on. What do you mean? The higher you go in leadership, the more you serve. Our thinking is, no. I climb the ladder, they serve me. <laughs> yeah, you end up being like Jacob Zuma. <laughs> but you want to be a good leader. You want to be a great leader. You can go and read that book, Good to Great, from, from uh, Jim Collins. And this is, this is what, he's, what he's found. The best CEOs in the world are servant leaders. And he's not even a Christian. It's not even a Christian book. But the best CEOs are servant leaders where, where, where they serve. Imagine where you have a president that, that, to serve the country. To say, how can I serve the people? How can I make sure that, that we have the best country, and the best economy, and the best infrastructure, and best hospitals? Because it's not about me. It's about serving. And, and I have a feeling, by the way, and I'm off script here, I have a feeling we have that kind of president at the moment. I have a feeling. Pray for him. Pray for him. But you see, what I'm saying is the Bible will challenge our thinking. It'll challenge our thinking. Uh, let me give you another example quickly. Bible teaches us, love your enemies. Man, that's so contrary to what we feel. Bible teaches I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I'm persecuted for, for believing this. So in other words, I go to work and they, yeah, I've been to church again. Because I go to church every Sunday. And I gave some of my money to the church. Are you nuts? <laughs> And so what happens? The Bible says, you'll be blessed for that. You'll be blessed for that. The Bible says, if I've, uh, I've cheated. The Bible says, I have cheated my wife when I lust after another woman. Now, you see, it's so contrary to, 
the society that we're in because, because most men will say, man, that does, uh, that's not hurting anybody. No, but it's hurting you and it's hurting your relationship with her and it's hurting your relationship with them. As the Bible says, keep your thought life pure, man. You see how the, the Word of God will challenge our thinking all the time. Another example, yeah, I can't love God and money at the same time. I can't love God and money. You're going to love one or the other. And so the Bible teaches, love God and use money. Let it be a commodity in your life. Use it. And one of the, one of the best ways to, to break the power of, 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 of money and greed is just through generosity. Just making sure that you're constantly giving some of your money. Just constantly doing that. You see, generosity breaks the power of greed. Where we come and we say, God, thank you for what you've blessed me with. And somebody needs a little bit. I'm going to help him. Next month, I'm going to help her. And I see there's a need over there. I'm going to pay their school fees. And I'm going to do that. It somehow breaks the power of, of, of greed in our lives. And, and, and what happens? I can love God. And use money. And you know, you know what I found? God looks at somebody like that and He says, I can give you more. Because you're not going after money. Money is not consuming you. More, more. How can I make more? What can I do? Yeah. You know, when money eventually just consumes. I've seen, I've seen it consume people. And God says, no, man. I see, I see you. You're using it. You're responsible. You're a good steward. But you're using it to bless other people as well. But you see, this is what happens when we get into God's Word. It challenges our thinking. I'll give you one more example. The Bible says not to worry. Not to worry. Now, some people, they, they are fueled by worry. Just like they put fuel in a car and the car runs on fuel, some people run on worry. And if they're not worried about something, they're worried about not being worried. <laughs> because it's all they know. And they, they, they got to worry about something. Are you crazy? The Bible tells us, don't. Just trust me. Oh, but I don't worry about my children. Well, why don't you switch it to trusting? I trust, I'm trusting for my children. I don't know where they're going to get jobs. I know. I don't know where, but, but I know from who they're going to get jobs. I, I know who's going to protect them. I know who's going to provide for them. And so replace that. You see, this year will challenge our thinking. We've got to read the Word. I want to share a story with you quickly, and I've shared it before. Some of you have heard it, but I'm going to share it again because I like it. <laughs> and I think it's a great story, and it's a true story. And so this young guy went to, went to Varsity, finished his degree. After Varsity, got a job, but it didn't last very long. Because he clashed with his boss. Lost the job. Got another job down the line. That didn't last very long because he had some, some issue with a colleague or something. And so he got another job. And that didn't last very long because there was some other issue or something. And so within the next four years, this guy had six different jobs. Just couldn't keep a job. And so this one evening, an, an, an elderly gentleman, family friends of theirs, visited, stayed over for the night. And so he just spoke to this gentleman, and he explained his situation. And he said to him, he said, you know, what do I do? I'm just so frustrated. I'm four years down the line, and I've, I've got nothing, and I've got nothing to show. And, 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 you know, he's just frustrated. And being a wise a man... He didn't fire away and give him some advice or something. He said, let me think about it. And we can talk tomorrow morning after, uh, uh, you know, over breakfast. Would that be okay? Yeah, that'll be fine. So the next morning over breakfast, the old man said to him, he said, I've got some advice for you. He says, if you, if you had to do this, I can guarantee within the, within the next two years, you would probably be smarter than any one of the bosses that you worked for. And of course, the young guy was thinking, yeah, right, as if that's going to happen. And he says, and if you will keep doing this, if you keep following my advice, within five years, you'd probably be a millionaire. Well, now he suddenly had his attention. And so the old man explained. He says, there are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. He says, if you would take a chapter a day 
and study it. Not just read it, but sit with that chapter. And if it's the 26th today, then go to chapter 26 and study it with a, with a pen and paper. And write down what you sense God is saying to you today. And the next day, you do exactly the same with chapter 27. And you study chapter 27. And next month, of course, you're going to do chapter 26 again. He says, but I can almost guarantee you something else is going to stand out there for you. And the following month, something else will stand out for you. You keep doing that. He says, you'll see what happens. You see, that old man was convinced that the wisdom here from, from only one of the books, from the book of Proverbs, would change that young man's life. And it did. Within five years, he was a millionaire. Just apply the principles from God's Word. And that guy tells how at times where he made mistakes, at times where he blew it or, 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 or lost money, he can almost always go back and say, Ah, I violated one of the principles. Over there, ah, I violated that. And he would learn from it and say, I'm not going to do that again. Man, I'm going to learn from, from that. You see, sometimes you and I have, have messed up thinking because of the way we've grown up, because of the homes we've come from. Our parents thought like that. Our parents did that. And, 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 and they didn't even realize it. And we don't even realize it. But that's just the way it's happened for us or, or, or because of society. Or because of our experiences, what we've, what we've been through. And it's, and it's molded and it's shaped us, but we don't have to stay like that. Because you see, God wants to renew that. God wants to change that. And the way that we're going to change it is through God's Word. One more scripture. Let me read to you Psalm 1. The very first psalm tells us what happens when we spend time in God's Word. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So in other words, he doesn't listen to wicked people. Or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. So he doesn't listen to wicked people, nor does he hang around them. All right. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. The law of the Lord simply means... The, the, the precepts, the instructions, or the teachings of God. In other words, God's Word. And so you know what that scripture is saying. Blessed is the man who doesn't listen to wicked people. He hears them. They're in the office. They're around you. You hear them, but you don't, you don't listen to them. You, you move on. And you don't hang around wicked people. <laughs> You, you move on quietly. You don't want to offend them. You don't want to hurt them. You move. Blessed is the man who doesn't listen to them, who doesn't hang around them, but his delight is in this. Because this year is going to condition our thinking. And when our thinking changes, our life changes. If we keep thinking the way we always think, we're going to keep doing what we've always done. Think to us. Think to us. Come, let's stand. Let's bow. Our Heavenly Father, it's an awesome privilege to come into this place week after week. And just to be able to open your word, open our hearts to your voice. You've spoken to each one of us this morning. And all we want to do this morning is simply just respond and say, yes, Lord, we hear, we take note. And as you challenge our, our thinking, we want to respond to that. And we know when when. When we renew our mind, our lives are going to be transformed. And so we don't want to conform to the pattern of this world, but be 
transformed. And so thank you, Lord, for what you've started in, in, in us this morning. Amen. Bless you.